All right. Hello, YouTube. Sorry for the shaking. I'm bumping this tree this thing's sitting on. All right, so today we're going to take a look at a few saws, um, which I'm sure everybody kind of knows about. Anyways, on the right, uh, Baco Laplander. All right, in between that and the good old saw viver on the left there is a Baco 396. Um, it's a pruning saw. Now, when I was looking at the Bacos, the blade on the Baco is considered a 396. And that blade in the middle, as far as I know, and I'm not positive, I believe is the same blade. Um, and I'll do a tabletop when I get back to the house and really show you close up. But I think they're the same blade with just a different coating. Um, and then there's this good old saw viver. So I came out here today. We're going to do a little quick experiment of which one takes, uh, you know, I'm just going to time them and see how long it takes for each one to saw through this particular log back there, which is... Uh, close, maybe a little bit on the small side of what I'd usually do. Not on the small side, just a little bit smaller than what I usually like. Actually, a log that it's sitting on is probably better, but I don't want to be out here all day because it's hot. So, anyways, here we go. I'm going to set up and then uh, zoom in and, uh, yep, get going. So there's the Laplander. We know it, we love it. Um, eh, you saw it, pretty decent. Uh, definitely cut straight, smooth, back and forth action. So there's the Laplander. Here's what I believe to be probably the same blade, but uh, just a different coating. So here we go. Again, nice straight cut. So, here's a saw viver, and this is kind of why I'm doing it. Um, you know, we all believe it's probably old technology, but I've, I've never really had much trouble out of this. Always really liked it. Um, would have typically said I would use it for a larger log than these guys, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Certainly doesn't cut as straight as those guys. Well, I know that. So. So clearly not nearly as straight a cut, but uh, anyways, there it is. I'll set them all down on the table and talk about them when I get back to the house. Um, you know, I'll time them later, and or you can see probably for yourself. 
I don't know that one took much longer than the other. Um, those definitely cut cleaner. Um, yeah, I'll talk about it when I get back. All right, you guys. So I'm uh, back from my little adventure there. Sorry for the shaky video. I guess I was bumping the tree my little uh, gorilla pod was sitting on. Do a review on him too soon. Maybe even right after this one. All right, so here we go. The big debate. The big debate. So at the end of the day, these two, the Baco and Solviver, basically cut that log that I was cutting in about 45 seconds, just about the same. And that was even with me tightening down on this a little bit, which is something you have to do so should be considered in it um <clears throat> so baco versus the solviver um so i'm gonna say probably 75 percent of the time i would take this baco laplander um it is definitely more compact easier to carry in your backpack less likely to tear other stuff up and uh and cuts probably just as well now the other 25% of the time, I would carry the saw viper when I'm really doing a lot of wood um, and a lot of larger stuff. I mean, that, that log I was cutting today, I generally cut a, a little bit larger log. Now, I have cut about that size log with a, with a Laplander, and it does it fine. Um, I was always worried that you wouldn't be able to get around and make a full cut on something longer than the blade. This blade's only about 7 inches. I'm talking maybe a 9 or 10 inch log that I'm usually cutting. Because in the winter time, that's really what you need to get to something that's dry. So 9 and 10 inch log, if I'm going to do a decent amount of them, I prefer the saw viper. Now, the only reason I prefer the saw viper over the Baco for that is the hand positioning on it. Um, I just feel like there's less fatigue in it after a long period of time. Um, this cuts easier, but the hand positioning isn't as good. So I think when you're when you're doing big logs, I think I think it's a little bit more comfortable over time. Now the blade does bind; it does not cut straight as the Baco does, which is a serious consideration if you're if you're batoning. But with the bigger stuff, I, I'm less worried about that. Um, and then uh, let's see here. Yeah, and then the the WD-40 thing, like you really need to use it with a saw viper. It will get bound up if you don't use it. So then you know you got to take into account that you're spraying WD-40 around, and it upsets some people, and um, and whatnot. But I do it, and if I'm out in the woods, I can live with it. Basically, at this point, I'll be honest with you. Like come this winter, I'll be carrying both of them with me. Um, I'll be carrying this to work most of the small stuff. I'll carry this to be working some of the bigger stuff. Quite frankly, there'll probably be me and another person with me. Which means we'll probably be doing both if it me and my wife I'd probably be cutting bigger stuff with this and cutting the smaller stuff having her you know cut you know more medium-sized stuff with that so a couple of just quick you know uh, I don't know specs on these the uh, the Laplander this is another big deal weighs about 6.4 ounces where the saw viver is 9.5 that three ounces isn't a whole lot in the winter but it's certainly something to be considered um, it's got a 7 inch blade and overall is 16 inches, um, which you can see the clear difference in size there. Um, and then the Laplander, or the Saw Viver, goes down to 3 by 15 but it does have some sharp edges in it, and it being in your backpack, you got to be concerned about where you slide this into your backpack, where I wouldn't think twice about this. Now, I'm going to try not to make this video too crazy long, but I'm going to throw this little guy in here while I can. So... So in doing some research, I kept seeing this little guy here for $20. Now, if you look on, on Laplanders or on Baco stuff, you'll see that this is a 396 blade, and this is a 396 blade. So this is $20, and this is $30, $35, depending on where you get it. $30 these days. It used to be a lot harder to find these. Pretty easy to find these now. So anyway, so I bought this guy just out of curiosity now after a little bit more research once I got back when I was looking up these specs I, I know the difference between these two now it's a mild difference in this blade design this Baco Laplander is actually a Baco pruner 396 blade that is a JS if you'll see this is an XT7 
this blade is a JS blade. If you look, it and it costs you know thirty thirty five dollars. Um, and then it has you know the Laplander has this black coating on it, which may aid in cutting uh, in the the slipperiness of it through the wood. Um, and this blade is a little more aggressive than this. Now just a little more aggressive. It took me 15 seconds longer to cut with this one than this one. Now, is $10 worth that? I think probably so. But if you watch around on this, you can really get deals on this. I've seen this thing as low as $15. Um, and, and if you could get it for that, it's definitely worth it. I think for your average backpacker that's going out and making small fires and non-winter conditions, I think for the money, I think this is fine. I think, you know, for the few seconds you're going to save, I, I think it's worth it. I mean, I think it's definitely worth 15 bucks. Um, $20 as opposed to 30 to $35, it's up to you whether it's worth it to you or not. I will always carry this, but when I'm going and I got people with me, I'm carrying smaller packs, I'll carry this as a secondary for somebody else to help me process wood. So... So at the end of the day, what do I think? Uh, which which one would I carry? Well, kind of like I said, I think I'd carry this almost all the time. And I'll carry this big guy in the winter time when I'm really processing big logs. But it is more comfortable. Now, also, this is more complex. you got rivets and you got all kinds of stuff. This, this can fail and has failed on me. I've actually had, I think this guy broke. Anyways, the, or the, yeah, there's actually a rivet. And I think this is my modified one. I think in the original one, there's just a rivet piece here, similar to these. And I have since taken a machine screw and a locking nut and put it on there. In fact, I guarantee if you look at this, you'll see that a rivet is usually here. That rivet broke on me. Now, I like this because I can actually tighten it with it by using this if I had to, if this blade stretches, and they do stretch. But uh, so anyways, yeah, I, I would say for the money, the Baca Laplander is clearly clearly a better choice um, but I do think there's a place for the saw viber so alright so for the, the sake of not making this last forever uh, there you go alright have a good day uh, get out and uh, get outdoors and make your own food take it easy you guys I'm gonna go to the fair now it's hot outside later